check, 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 I don't know who I am. <laughs> I want to rub your beard. It's the sound of it. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hi. <laughs> We're Soul Clap. This is Eli. And this is Charlie. We're Soul Clap. Wow, that's a loaded question. Where where should we begin? The the the, the infancy. I was born in 1981. Uh, Soul Clap was founded in 2001 on Eli's mother's porch. 2001. Fast forward to 2007. Soul Clap got serious. Figured if we had any chance in this industry, we better jump in with two feet. We put out our first record on Airdrop Records, and then soon got snatched up by Wolf and Lamb, and they were headed for the for outer space and the stars, and uh, we got along on the bus with them, um, and now we're in LA, 2013. We had our first album in 2012 called E Funk, and uh, things are happening. And this is Eli. And that's how it all started. Soul Club Records is a place of imagination, experimentation, and time travel. I wasn't expecting another Asian. I couldn't think of another Asian. I tried. I didn't want to pause for, for that long. It would have been too awkward. So it's, uh, we've, we've come across some really great music um, in our travels. From from people we've gotten to know and people who sent us stuff, and then we've gotten to know, and we felt like it was time instead of giving that music to other other places, other labels, to start nurturing our own talent and bringing some some people into the family. It's interesting that as we start a new label, we also don't want to be labeled, so don't label us. What label is your? Sh you have a label on your shirt. Don't label me, bro. I think it's Jordash. <laughs> That's a label. Hold the mic. I'm going to eat some cake. Well, I mean, I think it's always kind of different what we're producing, what we're playing. There's not like... It's hard to say. No. I guess what we're playing has to do with what we're producing. Because we try to play the records we we're making. Um... Mm. I'm very influenced by cupcakes. But the music we're producing right now is very influenced by funk music because we just spent the last four days in the studio with George Clinton. So that really connects us to our history with funk. We've gotten to know George over the last over the last six months, and his crew, and that like has really grounded us in the funk. But you know, we're also I think exploring new realms in house music again. We came from house. Our album wasn't really house. We kind of tried to make everything but house for a few years, and now we're trying to get back into house. You mean the you mean the not deep house scene? Um. What's called Deep House, at this point, isn't really Deep House at all. I mean, to me, Deep House actually has to be deep and not something that makes you jump up and down or put your hand in the air. Deep House is like Timmy Regisford at the shelter in New York City, or like Tony Humphreys at Zanzibar, or even like Masters at Work. I mean, that's Deep House. Deep House has soul to it and groove and real vocals, not just pitched down, stolen 90s R&B acapellas. I think a lot of people are using analog instruments to maintain a very analog sound. And uh, I think that uh, 
that doesn't necessarily give you authenticity just because you're using old machines. I think that nowadays it's all about figuring out something that's timeless because it's very easy to become uh, pigeonholed with like something like a analog fad or something that's happening. Know what I mean? There's a lot of really cool like analog throwback music coming out, but it all sounds exactly the same. So like, how can you take that? Say it's, that's what you're into is throwback analog. How can you take that and and do that in a new way instead of just regurgitating and recreating a record that could have come out in? Nineteen eighty nine. Tequila. Oh yeah, it's spicy. Um but not to be cheers. Cheers. What what? Cheers. But not to be too negative. Whenever there's a genre that becomes cool, like Deep House is right now, it just means that you have ninety nine percent of the music sounding exactly the same. That's my problem with it. And instead of looking to different influences and different things. You just have everybody copying each other, so it becomes this cycle into nothingness. This is what happened with Minimal, and... But Minimal was already so small to begin with. So the journey to nothingness was like... Literally. Um, it's less things. So, I mean, I guess this is, this is the cycles of music, you know? It's, it's, it's not a bad thing, it just is. I just think that... It would be cool if producers were more producers were pushing in more producers and DJs were pushing in more directions and trying to open their minds and other people's minds, not just copying each other and making the same track over and over again. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, taking risks, and uh, it's a very frightening thing to put yourself in a position where you're gonna where you might lose some fans because they're you're going against the grain. If, if, when thinking about the art of the DJ and where things are at, and if it's like a lost art form, it's hard to say whether these guys that are doing the festival shows with sync to the lighting programming, if they're even considered DJs anymore, maybe they're entertainers, um, and that's like, you know, they're selling big brands to big crowds of people and making a boatload of money in the process. I think that in order to do like this carefully timed fireworks and stuff, it's probably really hard to mix that. Eli and I used to DJ to models, sashaying and shantaying down the uh, runway, and uh, we, had to time everything. we had to time it, and we, we worked. Work. There was, that was like you that, was, that was like similar to like a battle routine. I mean, that was like you had to practice your set and be ready to time stuff. That's that's a totally different thing than just copping out and hitting play so you can time it with your light show, right? I mean, didn't Avicii say like have, was wasn't he actually quoted in a magazine being like all these old DJs talk about the art the art of DJing? It's just so they can try to stay relevant, right? He said that. I'd like to I'd like to see him try to walk in a pair of heels. I think that he actually is a woman. You didn't know he had a sex change operation. From a woman? He's got really, really feminine features. I mean, come on. Oh, I heard. The, I, I really heard this rumor. I might. It, it, I think it's true. But these, they're, 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 they're European, Eli. It's not fair to judge them. Um, there are neighbors up to the north. He's Swedish, right? And, and they have ma they have mafia in that country. She's she's Swedish. Sorry. Yeah, that's a mafia. Um, you gotta be careful. But no, seriously, like the there's th there's things th about the history of DJing that and all it takes is a few people carrying it. You know, not everybody like like it used to be that you would like someone say Larry, like Larry Levan and like old. He he knew how to wear high heels. Yeah, I mean like it was he would wear those heels. It was one. D <laughs> it's a paradise Garage, man. Hold the mic. I'm gonna eat the cupcake. Crew love is true love. 
It's um, it's just this goes to this goes to this op opposite opposition of this pre-planned. You want a bite? This goes, you know. Oh, <laughs> get it. Cruel love. To answer the last question, is the opposite of the pre-planned, pre-set. Preconceived party festival DJ set. Crew Love is it's like a, a dance of of creative improvisation. It's like we take it's a collaboration between our label, Soul Club Records, Wolf and Lamb, and Double Standard, which is Gotti from Wolf and Lamb's label. And when we started our label, we were like, oh, we're gonna do label showcases now. When we realized we've been doing Wolf and Lamb experiences and why would we just do Soul Club Records showcases? We could do everybody together and continue to grow the crew because that's really what our label is doing is just another branch on the, on the tree of, of Crew Love. So Crew Love parties, it's like we have all these live performers, no regular play, Tanner Ross and Slow Hands. I like to think of it as like a pine. Tanner Ross and Slow Hands and, and uh, Naveed Azadi and Pillow Talk and Voices of Black. So it's like, focuses on the live performers and the DJ sets become interludes. And then maybe there's a dance party at the end once we get through all the live performances. And so it's about creating an atmosphere and, and, uh, and almost a concert, but with no set times and nothing planned out. So you'll have a crazy, Naveed will jump on stage with Pillow Talk or like, you know, Charlie will jump on stage with Tanner and Slowhands and start singing a song. Like it's very much, we're all hanging out as, as a crew and just, Seeing what happens. When I was like six and seven years old, I used to listen to a lot of Raffi. It's really like, you know, Raffi is like, you know, it's like really nice for kids. Peter, Paul, and Mary. I like Sesame Street when I was when I was really. Then, but then, then I was more into more serious, serious pop music. <laughs> It's really <laughs> things got really serious. Um, I mean, DJ wise, Larry Levin, Larry Levin. I want to be taken seriously <laughs> musically. Uh, um, this was like what Frankie Knuckles was DJing at a club called the Warehouse, and people came into the record stops and started asking for warehouse records and. And that got shortened to house records when they were writing it on the wall. But this is like how a lot of sounds started. Because people are lazy. <laughs> That's how it got its start. I mean, this is also how, like, you know, disco, you know, people would leave the, the club in New York and they'd go around the corner to the record store and ask for the record. And that's when DJs were breaking records. That's like the record would get played in the club and then all the people would go and want to buy it. And the radio was looking to the club DJs. So that was a very different time in general. I think some of our best record buying memories were maybe at uh, dance tracks in New York Wait a City. Second. You're forgetting the most important one. Oh, and of course, in our beloved Vinyl Connection in Boston, Carol Mitro and Tom's store. That was like local digging paradise for disco and house. That's where we learned that house wears many hats. We're trying to find you, Carol. Um, we should get lunch. I found a white pages listing on the internet for her. I haven't called it yet, though. I need to so do maybe it. we're, I don't know, but we want to see you again. We miss you. Yeah, Vinyl Connection was really a special, a special place and taught us so much of what we know. There was only one listening station and it just had speakers. So you couldn't, you couldn't fuck around. You yeah, know, like, that meant that everyone in the store would judge your taste. Yeah. So you, you had to be careful. You played a bad record, you got kicked out. Yeah, and, and they, they really grilled you when you got in. Well, what are you here for? What are you looking for? And uh, fortunately, fortunately, we had some quirky tastes, and uh, we had guys like DJ Khan, K-O-N, 
uh, 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 like was guiding us, teaching us about different things to look for and special records. So, you know, we're, we've, we're very lucky to have mentors. How are you not going to travel around with vinyl? I don't think the question should be, why do we still travel with vinyl? I think the question should be, why do you not travel with vinyl, you lazy fool? Lazy? What's wrong, What's wrong with you? Just saying. What's wrong with you? I mean, I got a flash drive, too. The reason, the reason that we like vinyl is that some music is only available on vinyl. And boy, when it's good on vinyl, it's fucking good. I think it's, a lot of it, too, is the, is the performance aspect. Actually, using vinyl, you can create these special moments. Whether it's just us at the DJ booth because we're crazy and we're like, wow. Look, this record's stopping and the next one's starting from the beginning. Or anybody else notices? I don't know. But for me, it's exciting when there's these like, ooh, I can't wait to play this record. I'm going to put this record on and cue it up and then drop it. That's really more than anything. It's like, it's just really fun to play records. Yeah. I think that also vinyl is a wonderful way to discover new music. You know? Yeah, like standing in the record store and, and going through piles and piles and piles. I would really like to sell more vinyl, but you guys gotta fucking buy it from us. What's, what's the problem? We're not selling any vinyl. No, we're a new, we're a new label though, so. Buy, buy it. At this point, it's like selling, selling 200 records is, is good, is what we're told by our distributors, so. This is good, this is a good amount of questions for me. Personally, it's a good amount, it's my good amount. I'm about shutting the fuck up. No. Everybody should shut the fuck up about that. Stupid. Everyone should shut the fuck up. Oh, 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 I like this question. Nah. Nah, they don't need to shut the fuck up about it. They don't need to shut the fuck up about that stuff. It's fine. They can talk about that all they want. Um. We need a good one here. We need good ones, right? We can roll as long as we want to. Yeah, yeah, just give it a second. She was engrossed. What should everybody shut the fuck up about? I know, I'm trying to think. Hey, what what does everybody need to shut the fuck up about? Let's see. You know what? I'm gonna say about badgering me about drinking my drink. <laughs> That's what it is. No. I am pacing myself. This is, this is a lady you're dealing with. They're delicate like a flower. They need to be watered and sang to and put in the sun and sniffed. Are you being sincere? That's what I think of women. They need to be watered. They're delicate. They need to be sniffed. And they like the sun. And they like to be sang to. Yeah. I love my mother.